In this lesson, we are going to create our basic XR camera rig setup, which will work with the headset and hand track controllers as well. I've gone and created a new Unity project, and what I'll do now is delete the default camera that comes with Unity, just so that we have a clean slate. Now I'm going to go here and add a plane for the ground. And also I'm going to add a cube just so that there's something to look at once we enable virtual reality. Next, I want to create the basic XR camera setup that we saw previously, which requires us to have an empty object for the camera rig, an empty object for the floor offset, then um, a camera and objects for the hands. So I'm going to go here and create an empty object which I'm going to um, rename as XR rig. Inside of that object, I'm going to create another object for the floor offset. And inside of that, I'm going to create the camera, which will be the head. So I'm going to rename this to head camera. I'm going to create an object for the left hand and for the right hand. Great, so let's go now and look at the camera here. So this is a usual camera, but there's something we need to change. The clipping planes in the camera represent the distance that is rendered. For example, this means that you cannot see further than 1000 unity units, which translates to 1000 meters. So you can change the visibility of the camera. Also, you can change how what's the closest that you can see. And this might work well for normal 3D games, but in a virtual reality experience, you might want to, let's say, bring your hand controller to your face. So 0.3, uh, which is 30 cent centimeters or approximately one foot, is too big of a distance to, to have as a near clipping plane. Because if you bring your hand to your face, um, this uh, you're not going to see anything. So what we want is just to use the smallest possible value, which is um, 0.01. So once you set it to zero, it will default to that minimum value. The other thing you want to make sure of is that this target eye is set to both so that then um, the, the left and the right eyes will be created for you when you're running this in virtual reality. Now, if you run this in virtual reality, the camera will work, the headset will work, but you're, you don't have much control of how it's going to work. So we're going to add here a comp component called the track pose driver, which allows you to set up different settings and as to how this will be tracked. So first of all, device, we're going to leave this as generic XR device. That's what we use for the camera. Pose source. Pose means a position and a rotation. So it's like a transform, but without the scale. And we want to draw the pose from the head, from the headset. Then tracking type. Here you can specify whether you want rotation and position tracking. If your headset has six degrees of freedom, this means it supports position tracking, you can still force it to only be rotation. Um, if you want to create an experience, let's say with 3D photos where the user can't really move around or shouldn't really be able to move around much, you can set that to rotation only. Then um, update type, we're going to leave this setting because we want the, um, the position to be updated as much as possible, both when we're doing calculations in update, in the update method, and the rendering needs to be as precise as possible. So we're going to leave this setting. Now, relative transform. That means that the changes in position are going to be relative to the initial position of the camera. We don't want that because remember that we are uh, using a, an object that is going to lift the camera up when it's a stationary or that it's going to be on the ground. So we are going to be taking care of that ourselves. So we don't want uh, to have that relative position. And uh, lastly, we don't need to put anything here because um, that it doesn't apply for this particular case. Uh, for our left and right hand, we are going to take a similar approach, which is to add that pose driver. So let's start with the left hand here. For the left hand, we want to set this as a XR controller. And this is fine as a left controller, so we're going to leave that. Let's leave this as rotation and position. Same as before, and also note relative transform because the, the position of the controller uh, will be given by the, and also the rotation will be given by the tracking. 
right hand. And also, um, just so you know, this also applies for, uh, let's say, the Oculus Go or Gear VR, because even though those controllers don't track position, um, there is an algorithm that still estimates the position based on the model of an arm skeleton. So you want to leave this option like so. And same thing for, for uh, right. We're going to change here to XR controller and we're going to change the source to right controller and uncheck relative transform. So we are now all set. Our basic setup is ready, but there's one thing that's missing. We need to have something, some model for our hands. You could go here and add a cube, a small cube, but what I'm going to do is, um, what you can do as well, is find a zip file named existing scripts and models. And from that file, I'm going to drag the models folder into my project. And inside of that folder, there is this 3D model here of a robotic arm. And the other file here is a PNG, it's the material. There we go. Now, this thing is obviously huge. It needs to be real size for us to use it in a, in a hand. Also, the hand that you use needs to point towards the, towards the forward position. So that's the other thing we need to change. What we can easily do here is just create an empty object uh, which will contain that model. So I'm going to call this robo, um, robo hand and I'm going to move this uh, 3D model in here. And then we can do all the changes to the transform in the robotic claw, but leave the robotic hand as it is. So, and then use that in uh, inside of our controllers. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, firstly, I'm going to rotate this uh, model by um, 90 degrees on X so that it points to the right direction. I'm going to set its position to the origin. And I'm going to change the scale so that it is a good size, which I already know that this is the right scale here. Um, so when you are using your own models, uh, you need to uh, you either trial and error or use proper measurement to know exactly how big they need to be. Um, if it looks too big, you just reduce it until you get to a right size. Great, so now it's uh, much smaller. And uh, what I'll do is save this as a prefab so that um, we can then reuse this easily. So I'm going to create a folder here, name um, prefabs, and bring this robo hand into my folder. And uh, I'm also going to set this um, transform here to zero as well and apply that. So I'm going to delete this object now. So next I'm going to um, drag my prefab to both the left hand and the right hand. Um, great, so we have this setup now. We have everything we needed the XR rig, the floor setup, the head, the both hands. And what I'm going to do now is demonstrate how this works in virtual reality. I'm going to be using an Oculus Rift and I'm not going to cover it just yet how to set that up. I'm only gonna uh, just show you that this is working. There are in the course lessons that you will go into after we cover input actually, that cover every single one of the different headsets. In those lessons, I will show you how to configure all of the main headsets so that then you can concentrate on the headsets that you own or that you are interested in. Let's go now into virtual reality and see this working. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in virtual reality and both controllers are working fine and I can look around. Um, what we'll do in the next lesson is address the floor offset um, script so that we can uh, set our application to work as a stationary application and also as a room scale experience, provided that is supported by your headset. So that's all for this lesson. I will see you in the next video.